Welcome back to the SparkFun Inventors Kit for LabVIEW tutorial series. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this section, we'll learn how we can use PWM to control the red, green, and blue values of an RGB LED. So from the LabVIEW Getting Started window, I'll click Help and Find Examples. Then I'll click Search and type Links. We'll use the Links PWM N Channel example. This will allow us to write multiple PWM duty cycles with one VI. So I'll double click to open that example. Then I'll close Example Finder. And under the Serial Port section, I'll choose COM3, which is my breadboard. Now you can see I've connected pins 9, 10, and 11 to the R, G, and B pins on my RGB LED. And I'm using 330 ohm resistors to limit the current. The cathode pin of the LED is connected to ground. So on the front panel, I'll set my PWM channels to 11, 10, and 9, and I'll set all the default duty cycles to zero. Then I'll run the VI. Once LabVIEW establishes a connection to the breadboard, we can adjust the duty cycles. So we'll set the top one to one, and we can see the red turn on. If we disable that and set the second one to one, we'll see the LED turns green. And finally, if we set the last one to one, we see it's blue. Now we can mix these. If we turn on blue and red, for example, we get purple. If we turn them all on, we'll get something close to white. I'll go ahead and set them all back to zero and stop the VI. Rather than typing in numeric values, it would be great if we could select a color from a color picker. To do that, we'll add a color box to the front panel. I'll use Quick Drop and press Control Space and search for color and choose the color box silver. And I'll place that on the front panel. I'll also delete all these duty cycles because we'll be replacing those with this color box. I'll resize it. And then I'll double click it so that we can see where the color box is on the block diagram. I'll move that inside my while loop and let's take a second to look at the code. We're establishing a connection to the device. Then we call the set duty cycle n channel VI to set the duty cycle of the three different PWM channels. And then like always, we close the connection and handle errors. You'll see this broken wire is from the duty cycle control that we just deleted. And we wanna use this U32 color box to control the colors. We need to split the color output from our color box into its R, G, and B components. And we can do that using the color to RGB VI. So I'll place that using Quick Drop. I'll press Control Space and search for color to RGB. I'll place the VI and wire the U32 to the input. Now I'll get a value for red, green, and blue. To see what these look like, I'll right click on one and create an indicator and you can see that it's a U8. So this will give me R, G, and B values from zero to 255. I'll delete this indicator and I'll press Control B to remove this wire fragment. Then I'll add some space by holding Control and clicking and dragging. The R, G, and B values will be in the range of zero to 255, but we need them in the range of zero to one. So we'll divide each of them by 255 to get a zero to one output. To do that, we'll start with a numeric constant. I'll press control space and use quick drop to place a numeric constant, and I'll set the value to 255. Then we need a divide, so I'll right click to bring up the functions palette and choose numeric and divide. Now we'll take the red value and pass it into the top terminal and our 255 into the bottom terminal. So now we have red divided by 255, and that'll give us a double output between zero and one. We'll do the same for green and blue. So I'll make my block diagram a little bit bigger, and I'll pan down and extend my while loop. I'll move the code up, and now the 255 is just a constant. We can use that for each of the divides. So I'll click on the divide to select it, and choose Control C and Control V to paste two copies of it. 255 is always our divisor, so we'll wire that up by branching the wire from the constant. 
And I'll right-click to clean that up and make it look a little bit nicer. Then I'll pass the green value out into the divide, and finally the blue value. Now we have our red, green, and blue values in the range of 0 to 1. But the set duty cycle needs an array of doubles. So we need to build an array out of these values, and we can use that using the build array primitive. I'll press control space and type build array. By default, when I place this, there's only one input, but I can hover over it and pull one of the handles down to expand it to three elements. Now, when I wire in my R, G, and B values, I'll get an array of doubles. I'll wire the output into the duty cycle input of the set duty cycle VI, and I'll just clean up the code. Now we should be ready to run. I'll switch back to the front panel. By default, the color box is black, so we'll hit run. And once LabVIEW establishes a connection with the red board, the LED should be off because black would be zero for red, zero for green, and zero for blue. Now if we click in the box, we can select red, and our LED turns red. We can select blue, and the LED turns blue. Green makes the LED turn green. But we can also pick a mix of colors. So maybe a purplish color or teal or even white. So now we can select colors using a color box in the front panel. And this is way more user friendly than having to type in numeric values. Think about how you could modify this code to cycle through the color wheel or cycle through random colors to create mood lighting. That wraps up our section on RGB LEDs. In the next section, we'll talk about getting user input from push buttons. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects, and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.